The term genius is used way too often these days and is written by a musical journalist to create a good story or headline. It seems to me that this early part of Pink Floyd's history is compelling and takes over from what it is all about, the music. I think it was Roger Waters who once said when interviewed, what is important is that the music moves you. If the unfortunate events had not occurred, I do not think we would be talking about the songwriting ability of Sid Barrett as much. I'm a huge fan of Pink Floyd, but I struggle to understand and appreciate the band's early work on Piper at the Gates of Dawn. For me, this takes too much effort to listen to and is not as enjoyable when the band expanded and found their new sound, when David Gilmour joined and Roger Waters started to write more and take over the songwriting duties. Sid's style of writing may have influenced the later work of Pink Floyd, but from a guitarist's perspective, the guitar playing is not great and even for the time it was produced. There were far more accomplished musicians around at that time. It is very loose, erratic and lax technique. When compared to David Gilmour's melodic and tasteful solos, I just lose interest quickly when listening to their early work because of the skill and production. I guess if you look at what he did and at the time he was doing it, it was something new and groundbreaking. But looking now, the guitar playing sounds rough and not that creative or skillful. The long drawn out improvisations based around sound effects and unstructured music heard in isolation is very difficult to listen to. It is more tolerable when supported by the psychedelic backdrops, primitive videos and imagine when on the drugs of the time. In terms of songwriting, I don't see anything particularly stand out in Sid's writing. It seems very experimental, quirky and lacking regular structure, making it hard to listen to. I think his lyrics are his strength with often humorous and childlike subject matter and the way the rhythm is unexpected. But the craft is not honed and sounds rough and uncomfortable at times to listen to, especially when combined with the level of guitar playing backing it up. I like progressive rock and the odd time signatures and key changes associated with it and being creative, but the earlier work seems weird, too experimental and unpolished. The latter work of Pimp Floyd is far better produced and is more seamless and better put together as a whole package. For me, David Gilmour took Pink Floyd to another level, especially when he was able to work with Roger Waters. Maybe I'm missing something because I was not around when the music was released and do not understand the context in which these developments were made. I did not experience the live performances and maybe the imagery and the light shot altogether added to the appeal. Pink Floyd happened at a time when there was a huge gap in the market for something different, being experimental and original. They appeared at a stage in the evolution of pop music that was exciting and allowed for that sort of innovation. Maybe this is what people remember and enjoyed and are attached to. Anyway, if I was to recommend a Pink Floyd album to a colleague, close friend or fellow guitarist, I would say listen to Dark Side of the Moon or The Division Bell and they would get a good representation of Pink Floyd due to the melodic guitar work of David Gilmour. But if I was to recommend Piper at the Gates of Dawn, I think I would get some odd looks about what I was listening to. I do not aim to be disrespectful of Sid or Pink Floyd fans, but I think journalists get carried away with the myth and the story that surrounds it and forgets about the quality of the music produced and loses objectivity. Was he a genius? Well, it is a matter of opinion, but I think it is a bit misplaced and overstated. Maybe people think if it was not for his illness, he may have been and imagine what he could have accomplished. Who knows? One thing for sure, Sid Barrett was the founder and initial songwriter of what would become one of England's biggest bands of all time. He inspired the group to further success, and without him, Pink Floyd would have never been what they are today.